What's going on, YouTube? I'm back, your movie guru. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. Uh, I know I did. I saw three movies this weekend, uh, some better than others, uh, but it was a great weekend for me. I really enjoyed it. Uh, that said, uh, the movie that I'm going to be reviewing this time is Mortal Engines. Uh, it's starring Hugo Weaving. Uh, it was written by Peter Jackson, uh, produced by Peter Jackson. Uh, you may know him from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, so, given that it was written by Peter Jackson, uh, I kind of had a bit of uh, expectations for this movie. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I've never read the books, uh, but I thought he did a very good job. And then, based on how many awards have won, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of people who agreed with that. Uh, that said, this movie got a 27% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes and a 59% audience score. Uh, and actually, it was, I'm not sure if it was the biggest bomb of the year, but it's one that shaped it up to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, flops of the year. Uh, it cost around $100 million to make, and as of right now, uh, weekends past, today's Monday, uh, and it only has $7.7 .7 million dollars. Uh, that it made over the weekend. Uh, so it's doing pretty terribly. Uh, and I might be able to explain a little bit about why. Uh, so if you look at the trailer for this film, uh, it's kind of hard to understand what's going on. Uh, you get the sense that, you know, it's a kind of a post-apocalyptic movie. And for some reason the fu in the future, uh, people live in cities that are mobile. Like it's kind of like living on a big giant train uh which uh funny enough kind of reminds me of the movie snowpiercer very good movie if you haven't seen it uh starring chris evans uh definitely recommend you watch that one if you haven't already but i digress uh but yeah so this movie they're living in cities that are mobile uh and then big cities kind of, you know, attack smaller cities, you know, for conquest and resources, uh, kind of like the whole Mad Max vibe. That's kind of thing that you get from the trailer. Uh, and, you know, there's some other little plot elements sprinkled in between. Uh, I will say that having seen the film uh, and from the very beginning uh, as well as throughout uh, it becomes very apparent that there's a lot more to the story uh, that they just don't have the time to get into. Uh, and because of this, it really feels incomplete, uh, kind of rushed. Uh, the thing about it is, uh, from a line in the film, you know, without giving too much away, you can tell that it takes place somewhere like in the year 3200 uh somewhere around that time uh and at some time in the past there was a big war you know that destroyed modern civilization uh and really changed you know how humans lived on the earth uh, so you know those are kind of things that you're picking up and, and piecing together but really not a lot is said about it and it really kind of gives you uh, a, a sense of disillusionment and you're not really, you kind of, it's like you kind of understand what's going on, but you don't really understand what's going on. And it, it, there's a lot of pieces, you know, that just aren't there. And some films use this to great effect uh, because they allow you to, you know, kind of use your uh, imagination to fill in the pieces. Or, you know, they'll have a sequel or a prequel uh, in which they'll fill in the pieces. Or, you know, they're, they do fill in the pieces, but they're more subtle about it. Uh, this film doesn't really do that. Uh, it, it's, you can tell that, much kind of like the Lord of the Rings trilogy, uh, that it's done. Uh, the cinematography, you know, the special effects and the action, and it's all done on this big grand scale. Uh, but I really feel for this uh, film uh, the plot was not big enough to match the special effects and everything else that you see with the film. Uh, it, it's kind of like the 
there was too much film for not enough script. Uh, you know, even the characters themselves, uh, it's quite obvious that they have a backstory and a history uh, that is kind of, it seems like it's just kind of rushed, okay? It's introduced, uh, this is their motivation, and this is why they're doing what they're doing, and this is what happens to them because of it. Uh, it's nothing, you know, there's not really a you know, bunch of subtle elements uh, that get teased out and that you, you know, begin to unravel and uncover as you begin to see more of these characters' personality. Uh, you don't really get to see that. And uh, it's kind of like this film, when you're watching it, you think, you know, maybe this film should have been cut off halfway, uh, you know, it, and then uh, finished uh, in another part. Like maybe this film should have been a, a two-parter uh, that would really give you more time to flush out the characters, build a bit more of suspense, uh, because that, that's another thing about the film. Just given the, the, the grand scale of everything that's going on, it does seem kind of weird that uh, it's all resolved that the tension is has begun and then it's resolved all in the same film. Uh, given the stakes, uh, that did seem a little weird. Uh, going back to the Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, given the stakes of all of Middle Earth and then the ring, uh, it would have just seemed kind of weird if that film, you know, would have had started with this grand adventure and then by the end of the film, you know, it was all done. That storyline was resolved. Uh, so, you know, maybe that would have helped it more. You know, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just one of those stories that's kind of hard to make into a movie. You know, some uh, movies fall prey to that where they're just the technology or maybe the director or the storytelling just isn't uh, quite adequate enough to capture it on film. Uh, and this might be the case for one of those movies. Uh, that said, uh, you know, like, I don't regret going to see it. You know, it does have uh, decent action. Uh, it, it definitely was a novel concept. Uh, you got to see some things, you know, that you don't normally see on screen. Uh, you know, just as far as, you know, a floating city or cities moving on trains. Uh, you know, so there, so there were some new things uh, that, you get, that I got to see. Uh, but other than that, uh, I really wouldn't recommend going uh, to see this film in theaters. I uh, don't think it's necessary. Uh, if you're a big fan of Peter Jackson, maybe I'd say, you know, go out and get this on DVD or, you know, come and get this on Redbox. But this really isn't, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this really isn't a film that I'd say that uh, you would go out of your way to see. You know, it's just one of those films that, you know, it comes on TV and you know you'll check it out or you know if you've got hbo or you know amazon prime and, and then it comes on and you know you'll check it out one weekend when you don't have anything else going on uh, so that's it i give it a six out of ten uh uh that not something that you once again rush to the theater to see but you know it's okay to give a general viewing you're not gonna regret saying oh i wasted my time watching this movie uh, that's it. Uh, I'll get my review uh, for the other movies I saw this weekend up soon. Uh, I hope you guys have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. Once again, if you like what you see, hit the like button, subscribe button. Uh, leave me a comment if you agree, if you disagree with me. i uh, love to hear from you guys. Thanks once again. Have a great weekend. Uh, happy holidays, everyone.